the chronic excuse maker how do you stop making excuses this is actually pretty simple yeah, and I said it the other day and you have to realize you have to know you have to accept that all your excuses are lies they are lies all of them think about the things that you tell yourself the lies you use to rationalize taking the easy road taking the easy road and leaving discipline behind think about them you don't have time that's a lie you don't have support that's a lie you don't have the equipment or the gear lies you don't you don't know the best way who cares that's a lie or you're too old or you're too young of course you're too old or too young lie and there's you're too busy sure you are that's a lie and you're too tired or you're too sore or you're just plain not feeling it lies 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 and the list goes on and on and on and it doesn't stop if you don't make it stop so recognize recognize the excuses are not valid they aren't they're trumped up they're conjured up they're fabricated they're lies and how do you stop the lies you stop the lies with the truth you have to be the hero of your own story and you can do that Ninety percent of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like you're not gonna feel perfect every day. Gotta be those days you push through, and they're they're probably gonna be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. Write down everything you want to do. This is what I want you to do. Write down what you would like to fix about your life. And then just, if you're 30 pounds overweight, you want to lose 30 pounds, do it the right way. Go start eating vegetables, monitor your calories, write down what you eat, exercise every day, force yourself to do it. The brain is the general, the troops of the body, and you get up and you do it. And then you get to write it down. Our bodies, for whatever reason, uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. It's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life, a lot of those are connected to discomfort. Like discomfort is your friend. It really is. So this is what I say to myself. It changes all the time. Let's say I'm training for a 100 mile race and I get to mile 50 and I feel like shit. And like everybody else, my mind gets soft. Why? Because I'm human. I'm not some damn, you know, hybrid creature that was formed from the heavens above. No, not human. I suffer. I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. I don't like it. So my mind starts to get weak and we start to forget about how badass we are. You have to make sure that your mind doesn't become spastic. When it's suffering, when it's in pain, all it wants to do is find an easy way out, which is usually quit. If you quit, the pain goes away immediately. You gotta give yourself enough energy and fuel in your mind to stay just a little bit longer so you can talk yourself into staying for the whole thing. And this is how it works. Most of us never start anything cold. If you're gonna go to college. You gotta study your ass off. If you wanna run a 100 mile race, a marathon, if you wanna go be Mr. Olympia, if you wanna go be a scientist, a doctor, 
But what happens is, in that moment when we need self-talk, when we're failing, when we're in our worst spot possible, we forget the back end. Oh my fault, the front end. The, all the build up to where we're at today. We forget how, how much work we put in. So for me, we forget that we put years, years, maybe not into making these dials, but to getting where you're at today. Become this person, to be in a position to make this money, whatever the fuck you wanna make, whatever you wanna do in your life. We forget that. We forget that journey on what it took for us to get in this moment to make the right decision. You're supposed to have something so much more significant but the lesser drops off and the significance is you. Like you and your life creating the best you for the world, you being an offering for everyone you come across, that is what your purpose is. So once I made myself and the man I was creating my purpose, now I had work to do all fucking day. Most people are gauging who they are when shit's going good. I gauge who I am when everything's so fucked and the bottom falls out and life is just at its fucking rock bottom. Who am I at that point? is the man that I have to create and that's the man I have to operate from because it's a biased measurement if you're like hey this is me on my best fucking day like I don't even gauge that shit only when shit's fucked that's the man who I am and that's why I never miss because most people miss because the day's a little off and they choose to fucking miss the day's off that's when I prove who the fuck I am who's something as simple as looking at a frequency chart and understanding why you're at a low frequency why you're at a high frequency and the actions, the thoughts, and the steps that get us to a high frequency from a low frequency, it's very simple to see that your frequency is what you frequently see. And if the world around you is looking negative, it's because you're at a low frequency. How do we bring you up? I always tell people, don't even fucking worry about Mike. Don't even trip on Mike. Like, just say, am I at a low frequency or am I at a high one? And if you're at a low one, quit expecting, uh, quit expecting a high outcome, high output from low frequency. Don't do it. Just get yourself back high and watch how problems turn into possibilities. And when you're low, all you see is problems. There's no way out. So what I did the whole time in prison was cultivate a positive mindset where all I saw was this vision I was constructing of me on the streets, super successful, healing people the same way I healed myself. In my morning process, this is where I find everything. I can't, if I went too much through the day, I would be too impacted by bills, world, life, and all these things to where my content wouldn't construct the same. I have to make my videos directly after a morning process where I get to a high frequency and then I just have to just push that energy to everybody. And the message is, I like to say that when, you, when you're aligned, you're an antenna. You're an antenna and, and you're there. at that point, you just become a fucking, a vessel that is ready for change down here so you'll you'll be able to download everything coming from above and people just don't know how to get aligned or tapped in and that's really what i teach people the most because it's hidden in the stupidest shit like people think detachment is not owning anything but detachment is not letting anything own you so people try to detach from shit and like get rid of their cars all their shit the only things that will cause you to actually sacrifice or detach from anything that would keep you from your conscious state People always, how do you get to that place in the morning? Well, as I said, there's no distance to travel. So why would I have to do anything? They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, let me tell you this. I get up at 2.45 and work out at 4 and do all these things. They're like, well, why do you get up at 2.45? Like, what do you get from it? And, I, and I'm like, and they're like, why do you go to the gym at 4 a.m.? What do you get from it? It's what I get rid of, motherfucker. I get rid of all those underlying negative beliefs those low frequency emotions. And so I can get to where we naturally are. We're, we're naturally conscious, highly elevated, high frequency beings, but all the stupid fucking shit we've learned from lesser motherfuckers is what's brought us to that level. So being around people like Mike who say, hey, Mike just says, fuck it, I can do anything. Those are the motherfuckers you gotta get around, the people who don't have limiting beliefs. The popular thing now to, to, to like brag about your trauma and to brag about how all the bad shit happens to you and to post your sad story over and over and over and over again uh, on Instagram every three days. I see it over and over again. It's the same people answering the same fucking questions over and over and over again, talking about their problems and celebrating the fact that there's some sort of fucking flawed human. Look, mother, you can't win like that, okay? For a very practical reason. I want you to understand this so you don't think I'm just being me. This is a practical 
thing. 